Hello, I'm Joshua Farnsworth and welcome to my workshop. In this video I wanted to do an update on my workshop and some things that I've been doing lately and also some updates on my farm. And I don't plan on infringing too much on future videos with uh, farm and personal things, but sticking more with just woodworking. But I've had a lot of people ask me to tell them more, to show them more video and, and talk a little bit more about what we've been doing on our farm. Instead of doing a whole bunch of videos and including another bunch of videos, I figured I'd just get it all out of the way with a video catching you up on basically the past year, a uh, little less than a year of our process uh, of the farm. You saw the videos on uh, turning this RV garage into a workshop, and so I won't go into details on that. You can click right here if you wanted to see uh, those videos to see how I, I got through that. But this has been one of the busiest years of my entire life, having four kids, a full-time job, um, and trying to film DVDs, and trying to start a farm, and trying to turn this into a school. So if you remember, I talked about, I talked about uh, how I was, I'm planning on turning this into a school. So I, I, uh, you can follow that same link to learn more about that if you didn't see the video on signing up for classes. Uh, coming up here. So um, I was planning on just jumping in and building workbenches and I got started on building one of the workbenches out of probably the six to eight that I'm going to be building. Ooh, it's a lot. Uh, but then that kind of got slowed down because the county changed their mind and decided, hey, you need a special use permit for having a school with this many people in it. So they told me that it was going to take at least four months and about uh, $2,500. So, oh man, that hurt. So what else could I do? I really wanted to open a school in this area and, because I, I told everybody that I wanted to do it and, and I've got a bunch of teachers lined up uh, to teach some really amazing things. So I had to go through this process. So I, I paid the money and I went through the process, a lengthy process of, for a special use permit. And then, then all the waiting game and uh, the good news is I finally, after going through all the, effort, all the effort and paying all the money, they finally decided, oh, wait a minute, you don't need a special use permit. And they're refunding my money. So I'm not complaining about that, but it's put a delay on everything. And so I, put, I kind of delayed working on the workbench. Uh, a couple other things I've been doing in the workshop before I get to the farming stuff. Uh, I built a kind of, a, I don't know how you describe it, kind of an organic, uh, I don't love that word, but I guess kind of an organic walnut bench with some maple wedges in it for my wife for a present. Uh, some guy gave me some 100-year-old, I guess it's been drying for about 90 years, some old walnut boards. And so I, I uh, turned that into a bench and kept the, the flow of the bench, kept the lines, the natural lines of the bench, and I, I thought it turned out really nice. Uh, also, I built some, since we don't really, in our entryway, we don't really have a coat closet, my wife asked me to build some, something to hang the coats. So when I was in Hancock Shaker Village, I got some good ideas for some shaker pegboards, which I also did them here in the workshop, you can see something similar. So I made that out of the same walnut and out of, I think is birch pegs, birch shaker pegs. Uh, I've also been working on a little shaker, or, sorry, a Moravian footstool. It's kind of a neat design that I saw from Old Salem. I saw when I did a workshop tour with David Ray Pine, I uh, thought I'd give that a try. So that's pretty neat, ne neat thing. And I've also been working on a, a tiger maple wall cabinet, maybe to hang in here to hold more tools, who knows. Uh, so yeah. Uh, another thing I've been doing in here is uh, filmed, uh, filmed about two and a half DVDs <laughs> with Will Myers. Uh, one of them that's going to be coming out very soon, it's all wrapped up, just going to the printers, is the uh, Hancock Shaker candle stand. It's a famous candle stand that Will Myers finally took the effort to do what I guess nobody else had really done and he got the precise measurements on it. It's a very famous uh, candle table. So that DVD will be coming out soon, and uh, so look out for that. We also filmed a, a really exciting video that I've been wanting to do 
one for quite a while on building a, a knockdown trestle table. Uh, Will and I kind of came up with a design. He, of course, more of it than I did, but I kind of talked to him a little bit about what we wanted to do and came up with something that's just really great. So we filmed that. Uh, we also filmed here in the workshop uh, and in, at Hancock, uh, the, the, a uh, Isaac Young's wall clock. It's a, a, a recreation that Will Myers had, had studied and it's gonna be a really great DVD. I've been wanting to do film a, a clock making DVD for quite a while. So that's kind of it for, uh, not necessarily all that I've done here in the workshop, but that's uh, kind of the, the uh, kind of a summary of some of the things I've been working on in the past little while, past few months. So if you uh, don't care to hear about the farm and some of the personal things I've been working on here, then you can just watch the next video. Don't unsubscribe, don't worry. I'm not gonna talk about farming every time. I'm gonna keep, keep this focused on woodworking. But uh, uh, the, the first thing I wanted to, to talk a little bit about and share a little bit about has been the biggest project on the farm here and has been a, a fence. So we have, uh, we live on a country road, but it's a little bit busy at certain times of the day and we, we didn't want our kids to get hit or our animals. So uh, we've got six and a half acres here. So I decided to make a uh, fence around about three acres. I think it's probably about three acres. And I decided to do a uh, post and rail, uh, like a three board paddock fence. That was a lot of work, especially digging the post holes and uh, and uh, also putting up the three board fencing. Uh, concreted some of it, but most of it was just packed in dirt. So and in the woods, I did just electrical fencing and then around, I ran electrical wiring around the front as well. So that's been really helpful in keeping our kids and our animals on the property. Uh, and speaking of animals, we, I don't know if I mentioned this earlier, but we got some sheep, which is, uh, kind of exciting. I've been pleasantly surprised by having sheep. So the sheep, we originally bought three Katahdin bottle-fed lambs. They'd been rejected from their mother. And so a, a guy that we know, he, he gave us, uh, well, he sold us for about $30, three Katahdin sheep, lambs, bottle, and they had to be bottle-fed. So that was really fun for about the first two weeks until one of them died. It was kind of sad, uh, a sad experience. I know it's, it's all part of life, but it was still sad, but it was a great learning experience for our kids. Uh, too bad it was my favorite. It was a cute little brown lamb named Coco. Uh, so seeing those two little lambs walking around our, all this grass, I kind of realized that wasn't gonna help with my long-term goal of not ever having to mow the lawn again. So we decided to go back up, drive out to this farm where this, this guy is and uh, we, got three more the bottle fed lambs from the same batch that were there. Fortunately, we, we got a Coco lookalike named her, named her Hershey. Uh, so now in our car, we had three lambs and then this guy talked us in somehow, he talked us into taking two young goats, which he threw in. I should have realized it at the time, but he said, oh, they'll be great, they'll be great pets. So we got them home and oh boy, within two weeks, <laughs> <laughs> they were gone. They were nothing but trouble. So I built a, a sheep pen underneath our front porch uh, and it was really, it seemed, it seemed to work really well, kept all the predators out, kept them safe. It'd be kind of a temporary place and I've got a, a sheep pen that I'm building in the back. It doesn't need to be finished until it gets cold. So I'd always wanted to get into beekeeping. I love honey, so I th thought that I would give that a try this year. Uh, Will Myers, my friend, gave me a couple of hives, and so I, I ordered some packets. It's a smaller number than, than nukes. Nukes are established, about five frames of established honeybees. So I, I get these, these, uh, this, these two colonies, they started growing really well. And then uh, about two months later, the nukes were ready from, from the guy I was buying the bees from. Which, so I, I put those in two other boxes that I'd bought. And uh, everything was going all right until until small hive beetles got into one of the original hives. And since the colony wasn't really that well established, it just wiped it out. So, well, it, there was still, the queen was gone, but there's still a lot of bees. So some people told me, oh, I'll just merge them together. So I merged those two hives together. Then a couple of weeks, they were both, both all gone. 
uh, just killed by hive beetle, which is pretty sad, but it's a learning experience. But happy to report that the other hives are doing well, they're strong, so hopefully when, uh, if any of you come and take classes this next year, be able to try some, some honey from the Farnsworth farm. Pretty exciting. Uh, another fun farm experience we've had has been uh, hogs. So I built a, I used some of our fencing material to build a big pen. We also got some chickens, you know, you gotta, when you're, when you're doing a little farm like this, you gotta do chickens. I grew up with some, on a farm and wanted something like this. So we uh, ordered them by mail and got these little tiny chicks. And uh, in the meantime, what I did was uh, our neighbor and I, on our property line, there was a really old shed built out of oak framing. It was just, it looked like it was falling down. It was a really good shed, uh, about 12 by 14, so good size. And I thought, you know what, that'd be a great coop. So he told me, he said, you can do whatever you want with it. The fence I was gonna put there, you gotta go down anyways. So, so I found some guys that, I talked to a lot of people, nobody would handle this, this, this shed. So eventually I got a, uh, I found somebody who had this really cool hydraulic uh, trailer and they loaded it up on there, on that trailer and they hauled it across our driveway and they went and they set it down on, on, uh, on concrete blocks for me and leveled it and everything. And so that became our chicken coop. So once they got big enough, I was able to put them in there and then I uh, spent quite a lot of time building a chicken run. And I ran, ran the, uh, the fencing down and underneath the ground and, and buried it so nothing can burrow through and then just covered the top with some, uh, with some uh, bird netting to keep the hawks out because we lost one of our hawks, or <laughs> one of our hawks, we lost one of our, our baby chicks uh, early on when we were out letting them free range. So here in the woods, just can't let them free range unaccompanied. So lastly, uh, we, uh, I'll talk a little bit about our garden. So I grew up with huge, huge, huge gardens out west and orchards and everything. So I knew I wanted something big. I couldn't go as big as when I was a kid, but uh, I've been designing a kind of a dream garden for quite a while. I know here in Virginia, the deer are a big problem. So I knew it needed to be tall. And so I, I uh, set the posts, some taller posts when I was doing the fencing and uh, ran some, some wire fence underneath it, built some gates and uh, ran some high tensile wire around the top so to deer proof it. And uh, then I laid out the grid and left some grass strips in there for kneeling down and walking. Just make it kind of scenic. It, it, uh, I wanted it to be kind of like the gardens at Monticello and at Colonial Williamsburg that I'd seen. I thought it was pretty neat. So a lot of people told us uh, you're probably not going to get very much this, this year, your first year, but we decided, you know what, we're going to fertilize it really well. We did in the fall and we, uh, we grew our, our plants indoors and brought them in and out, in and out all, sp all spring and then finally transplanted them. And man, we had so many vegetables and we still do, just tons and tons of, of tomatoes and squash and cucumbers and beans and everything you can imagine. So we're pretty excited about our garden and we haven't had any deer in there so far, but uh, that is, uh, I could go on and on and on about all the things I've had to work on this past year, but finally I'm caught up with building all the infrastructure. So I'm gonna be able to have a lot more uh, spare time in the evenings to share some more woodworking projects with you. So I'm looking forward finally to be able to jump in and, and uh, have these, get into some more projects and get the workbench is all built and get this school going and it'll just be really exciting. So thanks for watching. If you're interested in learning traditional woodworking with hand tools, visit my website at woodandshop.com where you can find free video tutorials, buying guides and reviews. Make sure you subscribe to my regular blog posts and also check out my 10 steps for getting started. Enjoy!